G'day guys, welcome back to Glen's Aussie Barbecue. Today I'm going to show you how I make pizzas on the Komodo Joe Classic. Now I put a call out on Facebook last week asking what everyone wanted to see in a base. It was pretty well 100% everyone wanted to see thin and crispy with a puffy crust. So today that's what we are doing. Now this is going to be a long video because there's a lot of processes in there and a lot of that you might not want to see. So the whole video will be time stamped in the description of this video so you can just jump to exactly what you want to see. Now also if you're new to the channel I do tend to drop a few F-bombs here and there. So if that does offend you, maybe don't watch it or, or just watch it with an adult. So let's get straight into it. Today we're doing a 60% hydrated pizza dough. What does that mean? It just means it's 60% water. So if you've got 560 grams of flour and you want to make a 60% hydrated pizza dough, you multiply 0.60 by 560 that gives you your grams in water. And it's, the best thing to do is always to weigh your measurements, not go off mills, because you're going to be guaranteed a more consistent dough. But if you wanted to do a 70% dough instead of a 60%, it's 0 0.70 multiplied by however much flour you use. So you don't have to use a kilo or 200 grams. You can use whatever you want, but flour is always 100%. So if it's an 80% dough, it's 0 0.80 multiplied by your flour, gives you your grams. Or you can do this. Hey Siri, what's 60% of 560? 60% times 560 is 336. Hmm. But that's the easiest way to do it. 60% dough is a lot easier to handle than a 70% dough for obvious reasons. It's not going to be as sticky. So today we're going to go with the 60% dough and go from there. So we're going to start off with 336 grams of warm water. Not hot. We don't want to burn the yeast. We just want it warm, not cold. Just, just enough to take the edge off it. Now we're going to add 8 grams of dried yeast. Now you can mix that through if you like. I prefer just to use my fork like a farmer joe and just slightly graze the top of it, lightly flatten it across the top of the water. That's going to activate in around 10 minutes. It's going to turn into a nice foamy concoction. And that's when you know your yeast has activated. Now, in a big mixing bowl, we add 560 grams of double O flour, six grams of salt. Now we'll just mix that through with our hands. Now we just dig a little well in the middle of our flour and add 15 grams of extra virgin olive oil. Now we just fold the flour over the oil and once that's all combined all the way through, dig a little well in the middle again, and we just wait for our yeast to activate. Once our yeast is activated, we add our water and yeast solution to our flour. And with the spatula, what we're going to do is give that a quick rough mix through. Pop it onto our mixer with a dough hook attachment. And mix on low for around two to three minutes. As it starts riding up the dough hook, we'll just stop it clean off the bowl, clean off the dough hook, and start again. We do this for around four or five minutes. Once that's done, we clean off our dough hook one more time, clean off our bowl, then we mix on a medium speed for around four to five minutes. What this does is help activate the gluten. Now, if you don't have a mixer with a dough hook attachment, don't worry too much about it. You can do this in a normal bowl with your fingers. It just takes a little bit more time. And then move it to a lightly floured bent, which is what I like to do after I've mixed. Now we're going to get our hands into it. Quite simply fold the dough over itself and knead forward. Over itself and knead forward. Don't use too much pressure pushing through the dough. You don't want to go through to the board, you just want to feel it rolling underneath your hands. Now I find the faster you work your dough, the less likely it's going to stick to your hands or your workbench. So if you are having troubles with this, don't be afraid to add a little bit of flour as you go. Keeping in mind that it will change your hydration level, but at the end of the day, who gives a fuck anyway? Now I find as I'm kneading my dough, you'll start feeling it bounce back towards you. Every now and then you might even hear a little pop. That's a good sound, I think. I'm a truck driver, not a dough maker. Once I'm starting to feel a good bit of resistance from that dough, I start spinning it like this. Now what I'm actually doing here is I'm using my hands and I'm pulling the dough from the top to the bottom. It might not actually look like it, but as I'm spinning, I'm actually pulling that dough from the top to the bottom. What this does, I can't tell you because I'll be lying. But this is, <laughs> this is what I like to do. Once I get a nice dough ball, I give it a poke on top, and if the dough bounces back, I know we're good to go. 
Then we're going to pop it back into our mixing bowl, which I've lightly oiled on the bottom, very lightly. And I'm also going to lightly oil the top of the dough ball, just with a spray can, just like that. Now I'll cover the bowl with Glad Wrap, or plastic wrap, depending on where you're from. And also with a tea towel. Now the reason I do the addition of the tea towel is because I like to rest my dough near the windowsill in the front room. So it gets a little bit of direct sun. And I don't know if this is true or not, but I like to do that to protect the dough from the direct sun, just in case it, I don't know, dries it out or something like that. When you rest your dough, if it's a cold day, rest it somewhere warm. If it's a warm day, rest it somewhere cold. That's my science anyway. I <laughs> fucking know. That's what I do. Now it's time to make our sauce. We're using tinned Italian plumbed tomatoes today. Now you can use any tomatoes you like. If you use a normal tomato, that's fine. They do tend to be quite watery. So if you're going to do that, have some tomato paste or passata on hand just to help give it that depth of flavour that you'll automatically get from using Italian plum tomatoes. We add our two tins of tomatoes and with our hands, we are just going to mix that together. Now ordinarily, this is all I would do to these tomatoes. I would mix it and mix it and scrunch it and scrunch it until it falls apart enough for my liking. Today, I used off camera a stick mixer purely to take the impurities out of it and it's, have it nice and smooth. Ordinarily, I wouldn't bother, but today for the video, I thought I'd make a nice smooth sauce. I actually prefer a bit of a chunky sauce. So today, stick mixer, but you can do that either way you like. Now in a cast iron pan on low heat, we add extra virgin olive oil. Now I've got two decent sized cloves of fresh garlic that I've finely chopped. I'm just gonna brown that off. Now don't use too high of a heat when using garlic, you'll have a low heat, otherwise it will start to spit. Especially if you're using minced garlic that you buy in a jar, that spits a lot. So just keep that in mind, keep your heat very low. Quarter of a cup of freshly chopped oregano. Give that a mix through. Add a little bit more oil if needed. Now we add our tomatoes. Oh, look at the fucking colour. Add a little bit of basil here. I didn't have much basil. I only had enough for the pizzas at the end, so I had to hold back. I also had to use Thai basil, because I didn't realise our basil basil was actually picked dry. It was actually picked clean from all the other pizzas I've been doing, so Thai basil today. Tablespoon of smoked paprika. Teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. Teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of coconut sugar. Now, you can use palm sugar, you can use raw sugar, whatever you want. Coconut sugar is quite mild. This is what I use on my coffee. That's why I'm using it. I'm not trying to be wanky. So you can use whatever sugar you want. Don't use too much, because you can always add salt and sugar towards the end. Give that a good mix. We're gonna bring that to a high simmer, and what that means is just quite a few bubbles. And then we're gonna lower our heat right down. And we're gonna let this reduce. We're gonna let all those flavors infuse into the sauce. It's gonna take between 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how high your simmer is. Check it every five minutes or so and give it a stir. And once it's thickened up, you take it off the heat, let it cool. Seriously, how fucking good does that look? All right, so it is absolutely fucking pissing down here. I need to get this started real quick. I've already made the dough. This is real. This is what makes video real, people. No bullshit here. This is what's actually fucking happening. So ordinarily, I would light this up like I have, and that's exactly what I've done. I'm just gonna pop this sort of like that. <laughs> so Sort of like that, and let that do its thing. Now that is a three-piece fire lighter in there. I'll in include a photo of what that looks like. And today, excuse my arms, I need to not get wet, because I'm a princess. I'm gonna pop my grills in. Now I found a crack in my deflector plate, on my deflector plate. There you go, the fucking double-double. So I'm using my grill instead of my X-Rack. Pop these on there here like that. I love the fact that it's pissing down with rain. That just goes to show you. We still fucking barbecue when it's fucking raining. Deflect the plates up high. I am using untreated steel box as a spacer. You can use alfoil if you want. You can get four balls of alfoil, four squares of alfoil, ball them up, boom, 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 and use your pizza stone on top of that if you wanted to, if you have no spaces. Whatever you choose, make sure it's not gonna leach into your food and kill you. Put my deflector plate on here, which is, uh, it's, it's cleaner than it looks. All right, now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna move the camera so you can see what's going on. My apologies. Now that burn for a little while, but not too long, because my camera is getting wet, 
the wife's beeping a horn at Mikola, send her to the bottle shop. She's not going to be happy. She's stuck in this fucking rain. <laughs> but I'm getting scotch. That's all that matters. So I'm going to close the dome. I'm going to leave the bottom draft door fully open. Okay. I'm going to open the, the extremely wet slider and halfway and open my daisy wheel all the way. I will take photos of this probably uh, tomorrow so you know what I'm talking about. And I know that's going to get me to the temperatures of around 550 Fahrenheit to 600 Fahrenheit, anywhere in that range of 300 Celsius, which is where I want to be cooking at today. Hopefully we can do this today. All right, I'll, be, I'll see you in the kitchen. Now I said 550, 600 Fahrenheit, 300 Celsius. What, what I actually meant was fucking, that's, where, that's, that's the temperature it's going to get me to with those settings, okay? I come out around an hour or so later, I check it. It's going to take around an hour and a half to get to that point. Then I'll make any adjustments I want. I actually want to cook at 650 Fahrenheit, 350 Celsius. That was my target temp, and that's what we actually cooked at. It was raining and I was getting flustered. But when we start our Kamado, that's the perfect time to go and start doing your dough balls. That gives them a good hour and a half to sit on the bench and do their thing. Now it's been around five hours and as you can see our dough has more than doubled in size. So now using a spatula, we're going to carefully remove that dough and try not to knock the air out of it. So now using a very blunt knife and a very hard surface, I'm going to cut this into three pieces roughly the same size and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Slowly twist it with my hands and form three individual dough balls. So once our balls are the, the shape we like them to be, I'm going to grab one long piece of baking paper or, or parchment paper, depending on where you come from, lightly flour it and then place my balls carefully on the paper, making sure not to hurt them. Then I'll cover it with a damp tea towel that's been wet with warm water. So everything's gone to shit here today. That storm just totally fucked everything. So what I'm going to do is I've put two of the dough balls in the fridge and what we'll do is we'll do a, a 24 hour dough ball on those. And on this one, we'll trial. I don't know if I've got enough light out there to do this. Uh, the rain has just stopped right now, but whether or not it stays away is the question. So this is what I do. I don't fuck around with the dough too much. We start inside the edge here and form a crust and we push out. We try not to ruin that outer edge, okay? If you need a bit of flour, flour your hands, not the dough, okay? What's the difference, you might be asking? I don't know, it just sounded like something fucking to say. All right, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing again. Move our way from the edge out. Tomorrow I'll show you the baking paper method which is good also. People who are, you know, professionals and what are they called, fucking traditionalists will go, fuck off, that's not how you do pizza. I don't fucking do pizzas for a living. So what we do here, we form our pizza, keep our crust integrity good. And now what we do, is a stretch, stretch. Very hard to do this on camera. It's absolutely fucked to be honest. I don't, this is why I stopped doing pizza videos. Did some ages ago, but to do it, it's just fucked. It really is. I don't know how people fucking do this fucking shit for a living, doing videos. All right, keep your crust, keep your crust. Keep the integrity of your crust. Alright, and that's how you make it circular and thin. Keep your crust fluffy and everything else thin. Alright, now, I said I'd show you this tomorrow. I'll show you right now. Alright, put this on the baking paper, like that. Go back to your circular shape. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Now we'll hit it with our homemade sauce, mozzarella, 
And of course, I can't have a pizza without Parmesan. Using our pizza peel, we're just gonna slide directly underneath that baking paper for an easy transfer to the barbecue, even though I've made a mistake with it. So unfortunately, it is still raining. We're running just under, well, just on 350 Celsius. Baking paper transfer. We'll come back in two minutes, pull that baking paper out and uh, show you how easy that is. Some wanker out there doing burnouts in the fucking, in the fucking rain. All right, pull that out. It's really simple. No problem at all. Whoops. We'll come back in a few minutes. We'll check that out. So a quick look in the spin. Always burp, especially as high temperatures. You never know what's going to happen. Look at that crust. Look at this bubbling up. It's exactly what we're looking for. Even though today has not gone to plan, this pizza is going to be fucking epic. I can just tell. We're going to dress that with basil at the end. And this should be the last check. Let's have a quick look. Check that burp. Always watch the burp. Oh yeah, we are looking good. We are looking good. Not burning underneath, as you can see, you probably can't see that. A little bit longer, just give that a flip, give that a twist. Nice and puffy on the crust, that's what you want. You want the crust to still be puffy. If the crust is puffy here, you know it's gonna be airy. If it's hard, you know it's gonna be crunchy. You don't want crunchy. You want nice and fluffy and, and kinda of crunchy. You know what I'm saying. Now that should be pretty much done now. The lighting is terrible out here. I'll take a little photo with my phone while we're doing this so you can see the difference. It looks the same. <laughs> it's, the lighting's fucked. Let's have a look at that base. See if we can't show you the base. The fucking pizza peels all fucking... Can you see that? Can you see that? No, you can't fucking see that. Fuck me. Talk about an absolute abortion of a day. I'm going to take some photos. That's still nice and puffy. Fuck yeah. <laughs> take some photos. Tomorrow we'll come back. We'll do the other two doughs that are in the fridge now. So they're going to be a slow... Uh, well, I'll explain it to you tomorrow in more depth what we're going to do and why it's not going to hurt the day. All right. Until tomorrow. So here's the base. As you can see, definitely not burnt. There's that crust. Have a look at that. Let's see how crunchy it is. That sauce is fucking amazing. It really is. I'm gonna check out this. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. It's been raining for the last 24 hours, so unfortunately there's not gonna be any more pizza cooks on this video. Thanks for watching, hit like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time. Now, unfortunately it did rain for three days straight, so I didn't get a chance to do anything with that pizza day. But the next day I did take it out of the fridge, I put it on the bench, let it sit for two to three hours to come to room temp, and I stretched that into a pizza base, just to show you how resilient that dough is. So there's our flour, been in the fridge for, well, overnight, to get it out. Try and do it so you can see it. Just flick your fingers around the side like that. Slowly work your way around. Just takes a bit of maneuvering. I'm sorry, Mr. Camera Woman, I know I'll make it a harder for you. Lucky I'm long suffering. Lucky you are long suffering. And do the same thing as before. the flour if needed. You can always do the steering wheel. The old bus, driving the bus, if you want to. The most important thing is to keep the integrity of the crust. Never bend the crust, never crimp it. Just move the fingers on the inside of the crust. You can see, look at it bubbling up. Bloody beautiful. Anyway, we won't be making a pizza tonight, but just showcasing that the dough is fine. 
after you put it back in the fridge like we did yesterday. There we have it. Ordinarily, we now sauce it, chuck on the bloody barbecue, but it's raining cats and dogs. Well, it looks nicer than usual. What? Well, we got, look at all these bubbles. Well, it's just because it's, um, you yeah, know, it's bubbly. Looks better than usual. Well, thank you, darling. You're welcome. That's, that's pretty much it. Cunt dogs. And then, while it's the, now when I start the Kamado, Fucking flash. Oh, the fucking camera, you fucking idiot. That's what it does when it's focusing. Now, when I start my now setting my now setting now now we're setting like now now <clears throat> now I set my vents to that point. Fuck off, dough balls. Fuck me, dead. What was fucking flies? 300 Celsius. What, what I actually meant. Fucking perfect, Glenn. You got it. Fuck me. Becoming a professional. Fuck me. Then write it down. Now let's, now let's just, so let's get straight into it. So let's get straight into I multiply 0 0.560. What? <laughs> oh, you fucking idiot. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> fucking sick today. So let's jump straight into it. Today we're doing a dough that's 500, 560. What the fuck, Len? That's not even fucking. <laughs> oh, why did I ever get that fucking wrong? Now, if you are new to Glenn's Aussie, now if you, now if you are new to the channel, now if you, wait. Where's my shotgun? Now, if you are new to the channel, there are... <laughs> <laughs> Fucking thing. 